free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to a tutorial on the F9 Panther series. Why? Because everyone is spamming them out now and flying them even worse than the way they used to be flown. Which is bombs, crashing on takeoff, turn fighting, committing in head-on passes, you name it. But at least there's a good reason for the spam, right? I mean, everybody's on the hype train to get the F9F8 Cougar as soon as it's introduced in patch 1.63. Which, I will be damn surprised if it comes anywhere close to the performance of the F2 Sabre and people don't go around complaining that Gaijin gave them the wrong plane. But for the sake of it, I'm calling dibs. Now, why am I driving out a tank if I'm making a tutorial on a panther? It... what? Well, you see, you're not flying the panther wrong. You're flying it in the wrong game mode. Now, there was once a question I got which was, is the Panther better or worse than the Sea Venom? Saying that the Sea Venom is the absolute worst plane in the game. Well, the Sea Venom is worse because it doesn't get the option to switch game modes. Now, sure, you could use it in combined arms, but it has no alternative weapon source. Whilst the F9F Panther comes stock equipped with shells that can penetrate any tank it will face from the top, along with optional rockets and bombs. The damn plane is a flying arsenal of weaponry, but to utilize it we have to think AD2 Sky Raider. It's shit in aerialistic battles, but one of the best if not the best ground attackers based simply off of payload in ground forces. So combined arms are your one ticket out of just unlocking this plane, spading it through and having fun whilst doing it. But there is one problem I'm sure you've all already pointed out. I don't have top tier vehicles. How am I supposed to play it? Yeah, good point. That's the only quite slight setback, but there is a way to get around it. Now, if the map you're playing on is break or single slash triple capture point, so anything but the map situation you're looking at here, where there's two spawn caps, you could potentially take out a M2A2 or any of those fast-moving tier 1 noobish tanks with machine guns rush in, capture one or two of the points, and because of the low amount of spawn points those vehicles require, you should be able to respawn in with the Panther to provide air support. Risky, troll squaddy, but could potentially pay off. As for those players who don't just play one nation and one tech tree alone, the Sheridan or perhaps a T92 uptiered from 6.7 to 8.0 wouldn't be such a bad idea. Now, whilst you're watching me just get a couple of kills here to get enough spawn points to actually take out the Panther, how about a really quick comprehensive review of the Sheridan itself? Now, I will do a video on it at some point in the near future, but as it is, I don't like it. I think it's okay, but it's nothing spectacular that other tanks couldn't do better. But for the role that we're looking for here, which is hard hitting and quick to maneuver around into concealment, it does just the job for it. Other than that, it's really easy to kill. The reload rate is way too slow compared to that of the Rakitnyak Panzer or the IT-1. And I think what the tank really lacks is that low profile that most tanks at this BR actually get. It's extremely tall, wide, easy to hit. But again, if it gets the job done, there's not much to complain about it. So, we've killed our three tanks, we've done the damage that we could have. How are we going to implement the F9F Panther now? There's a very distinct difference between flying a plane in ground forces because you want to play it, and playing ground forces because you want to help your team out as well. And that's the Panther's most important role. We're not just playing it for the sake of playing it, we're playing it so that we can actually help our team win. And you need to understand that, because I often see players take out planes with no ordnance and just fly around the battlefield. They don't spot, they don't message anyone, all they do is just they wait. They wait for an opportunistic moment for an enemy aircraft to appear. When you're flying a plane, you are going to be multitasking insanely well. First of all, you gotta look for enemy planes. Bombers are your priority. When you're flying a fighter, you wanna take down the enemy bombers. ASAP. 
Number two, you're paying attention to the enemy spawn and any cap circles. If they're capping, you want to make sure you get them out of there. And last but not least, pay attention to your teammates, because if somebody is in need of assistance, you got to get there pronto. But with all that said, I don't think there's much more of a tip or trick or anything that I can tell you. It's straightforward. If you know what your objectives are, and if you know how to control the aircraft, how to get the kills easily, you shouldn't have a problem flying this thing out at all. But there is some things I can tell you. In ground realistic battles, the main difference is you don't see enemy strobes. You can't see where the players are. They're technically invisible. It's sort of like flying in sim battles with no HUD. Because of that, you're in a bit of a disadvantage. But think about it. So is your enemy. Now, flying close to the ground, treetop level, will do two things for you. It will keep your speed way up. You will stay away from triple A's. And most importantly, players will simply lose sight of you. So many times, when somebody's on my six, go to treetop level, accelerate to full speed, and just wait. Sooner than later, they will lose sight of you, you can turn around, and you can execute them in no time. Next up, we're talking ordnance. Now, whether you're taking out nothing, or rockets, or bombs, they're not so hard to use if you have trigger patience, if you know where to aim, you could very easily kill, you know, three tanks with those six rockets, since they fire in tandem of two, but... I tend to just spam all of them. Now, again, you know, be preservative or be aggressive, doesn't matter. I knew from the start of this match that I was going to have enough points that even if I got taken out in the Panther, and I eventually did, I had a backup. And there's one of the secrets. When you play a lot of matches, one after another, and with Tier 5 you will kind of need to do that, the game will continuously reward you with more and more backups. And chances are that at the time that you're going to be flying the plane out, you will have up to 5 or 7 backups. That's the case with me. So I don't feel bad about throwing them out. After all, in aerialistic battles, you'll never use up those backups. In ground forces, you can use them up on a concurrent game-after-game -game basis. All in all, that covers our theoretical approach. Now, in order to get better at it, you'll require a lot of practice. You have to test around different convergence settings, maybe certain types of armament. Rockets might not work as well for you as bombs will. For bombs, you got to play around with different types of... Uh, whether it's assault fuse or you have three, four-second delay. At the end of the day, every player is a little bit different. Some might be a bit more aggressive like myself, some might be a bit more defensive. But the general idea is you have to keep your eyes peeled at all times. Planes will be spawning in, tanks will be spawning in, and tanks will be attacking your teammates. So you're going to be multitasking a lot. And so don't just think, oh, I'm flying out a panther in ground forces to, you know, have some fun in it and play it. No, you're adequately supporting your team. Planes have just as much, if not more, impact in certain cases on the match development as tanks do. So don't just go into a plane thinking, oh, we're going to have some fun. Do it because you want to help your team win the match. And speaking of winning the match, even after I got 8 ground kills, 6 air kills, yeah, we lost. And as disappointed I was in that, it just shows how important it is to fight until the last minute. And the reason I do make it a big fuss when it comes to losing matches in ground forces is because they are the lead cause of low RP gain. A match that you've gotten 14 kills, like I did here, that is a loss, will drop so much RP away as if you just had three kills and won the match. And because of it, I do emphasize Teams need to work together. Teams need to look at the map, look at their teammates, and work together. If you want to progress, if you want to get as much RP and silver lines as you can, you've got to start winning matches. There's no other way around it. It's either teamwork or slow progression. And because of it, I was really disappointed at the end of this match. You know, such a game, such a monstrous performance, and still we couldn't carry it quite until the end. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, make sure to let me know any questions that you have along with the f f Panther in the comment section below. But until next time, take care and uh, safe flying.
Hey guys, welcome back to Wall Thunder and welcome back to yet another Ultimate Tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the perfect clickbait video in just three steps. Step number one is the most important one. You have to make a clickbait title. Think of something that people will really want to click on because it's being promoted at the moment. Make sure to put it in giant caps lock so people don't miss it in their sub feed. And most importantly, include a bracketed gameplay somewhere just so that you don't confuse them with actual gameplay because that's not what you're showing. Step number two, since you're not actually showing any gameplay yet, just a simple test flight that they can watch on pretty much any website available, <laughs> what you want to do is you want to elaborate that more by providing some information 